my dears hello my dear students welcome to teacher at home today class we are going to learn the second chapter forest and wildlife resources naraki my lord narag my lord you are the creator of music in the world of lepchas oh narag narak my lord let me dedicate myself to you let me gather your music from the springs the rivers mountains forests the insects and animals let me gather your music from the sweet breeze and offer it to you lepcha folk song from northern part of west bengal we share this planet with millions of other living beings starting from microorganisms and bacteria lichens to banyan trees elephants and blue whales this entire habitat that we live in has immense biodiversity we humans along with all living organisms form a complex web of ecological system in which we are only a part of very much dependent on with this system for our own existence for example the plants animals microorganisms recreate the quality of the air we breathe the water we drink and the soil that produces our food without which we cannot survive forests play a key role in the ecological system as is are also the primary producers on which all, <clears throat> all other living beings depend biodiversity or biological diversity is immensely rich in wildlife and cultivated species diverse in form and function but closely integrated in a system through multiple network of interdependencies flora and fauna in india If you look around you will be able to find that there are some animals and plants which are unique in your area in fact india is only the one of the world's richest countries in terms of its vast array of biological diversity this is possibly twice or thrice the number yet to be discovered you have already studied in detail about the extent and variety of forests and wildlife resources in india you may have realized the importance of these resources in our daily life these diverse flora and fauna are also so well integrated in our daily life that we take this for granted but lately they are under great stress mainly due to the insensitivity of our environment find its stories prevalent in your region which are about the harmonious relationship between human beings and nature conservation of forests and wildlife in india conservation in the background of rapid decline in wildlife population and forestry has become essential but why do we need our to conserve our forests and wildlife conservation preserves the ecological diversity and our life support systems water air and soil it also preserves the genetic diversity of plants and animals for better growth of species and breeding for example in agriculture we are still dependent on traditional crop varieties fisheries too are heavily dependent on the maintenance of aquatic biodiversity in the 1960s and 70s the conserva- conservationist demanded a national wildlife protection program the indian wildlife <coughs> tribal girls using bamboo saplings in a nursery at mukali near silent valley tribal women selling minor forest produce leaf litter collection by women folk act was implemented in 1972 with various provisions for protecting habitats and all in their list of protected species were also published the thrust of the program was towards protecting the remaining population of certain endangered species by banning hunting giving legal <coughs> protection to their habitats and restricting trade in wildlife subsequently central and many state governments established national parks and wildlife sanctuaries about which you have already studied the central government also announced several projects for protecting specific animals which were gravely threatened including the tiger the one known rhinoceros the kashmir stag or hangal three types of crocodiles the freshwater crocodile saltwater and the gharial the asiatic lion and others most recently in the indian elephant bland buck chinkara the indian great bustard godavan and the snow leopard 
have been given full or partial legal protection against hunting and trade throughout India. Project Tiger Tiger is one of the key wildlife species in the faunal web. 1973, the authorities realized that the tiger population have dwindled to 1827 from one estimated 55,000 at the turn of the century. The major threats to tiger population are numerous such as pouching for trade, shrinking habitat, depletion of prey-based species, growing human population, etc. The trade of tiger skins and the use of their bones in traditional medicines especially in the Asian countries, left the tiger population on the verge of the extinction. Since India and Nepal provide habitat to about two-thirds of the surviving tiger population in the world, these two nations became tiger projects for pouching and illegal trading. Project Tiger, one of the well-published wildlife campaigns in the world, was launched in 1973. Tiger conservation has been viewed not only as the effort to save an endangered species, but with equal importance as a means of preserving biotypes of sizable magnitude, Corbett National Park in Uttarakhand, Sundaban National Park in West Bengal, Bandavang National Park in Madhya Pradesh, Sariska Wildlife Sanctuary in Rajasthan, Manas Tiger Reserve in Assam, Peria Tiger Reserve in Kerala, some of the tiger reserves in India. The conservation projects are now focusing on biodiversity rather than on a few of its components. There is now a more intensive search for different conservation measures. Increasingly, even insects are beginning to find a place in conservation planning. In the notification under Wildlife Act of 1980-1986, several hundred butterflies, moths, beetles and one dragonfly have been added to the list of protected species. In 1991, for the first time, plants were also added to the list starting with six species. Types and distribution of forests and wildlife resources. Even if we want to conserve our vast forests and wildlife resources, it is rather difficult to manage, control and regulate them. In India, much of its forests and wildlife resources are either owned or managed by the government through the forest department or other de government departments. These are classified under the following categories. Reserved forests, more than half of the total forest land has been declared reserve forests. Reserve forests are regarded as the most valuable as far as the conservation of forests and wildlife resources are concerned. Protected forests. Almost one third of the total forested area is protected forests as declared by the forest department. This forest land are protected from any further depletion. Unclassed forests. These are other forests and wastelands belonging to both government and private individuals and communities. Reserved and protected forests are also referred to the permanent forest estimates maintained for the purpose of producing timber and other forest produce and the protective reasons. Madhya Pradesh has the largest area under permanent forests, constituting 75% of the total forest area. Jammu and Kashmir, Andhra Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, Maharashtra have large percentage of reserved forests of its total forest area, whereas Bihar, Haryana, Punjab, Himachal Pradesh, Odisha, Rajasthan have a bulk of it under protected forests. Karyal on the brink The Karyal population has been at the lowest since 1970s. What went wrong and what can we do? Bird deaths blamed on dirty Yamuna. Eastern states and part of the Gujarat have a very high percentage of the forests as unclassed forests managed by local communities. Community and conservation. Conservation strategies are now new in our country. We often ignore that in India, forests are also home to some of the traditional communities. In some areas of India, local communities are struggling to conserve these habitats along with government officials recognizing that only this will secure their own long-term livelihood. In Sariska Tiger Reserve, Rajasthan, villagers have fought against mining by citing the Wildlife Protection Act. In many areas, the villagers themselves are protecting habitats and explicitly rejecting government involvement. The inhabitants of the five villages in the Arwa districts of Rajasthan have declared 1,200 hectares of forest as the Bairodev 
the cows on jury declaring their own set of rules and regulations which do not allow hunting and are protecting the wildlife against any outside encroachments. The famous Chipko moment in the Himalayas has not only successfully resisted forestation in several areas but also shown that community afforestation with indigenous species can be enormously successful. Attempts to revive the traditional conservation methods are developing a new methods of ecological farming are now widespread. Farmers and citizens, groups like the Beach Bachao Andolan in Tehri and Naudanya have shown that adequate levels of diversified crop production without the use of synthetic chemicals are possible and economically viable. In India, Joint Forest Management Program furnishes a good example for involving local communities in the management and restoration of degraded natural worship is an age-old tribal belief based on the premise that all creations of nature have to be protected. Such beliefs have preserved several virgin forests of pristine form called sacred groves, forest of god and goddesses. These patches of forest or parts of large forest have been left untouched by the local people and any interferences with them is banned. Certain societies revert a particular tree which they have preserved from long time immemorial. The Mundas and the Sandal of Chota Nagpur region worship Mao, Basia Latifolia and Kadamba, Anthocephalus, Kadamba trees and the tribals of Odisha and Bihar worship the tamarind, tamarindia syndica, and mango, mangifera indica trees during weddings. To many of us, people and banyan trees are conserved, considered sacred. Indian society comprises of several cultures, even with its own set of traditional methods of conserving nature and its creations. Sacred qualities are often ascribed to springs, mountains, peaks, plants, and animals which are closely protected. You will find troops of macanos and lagoons, languors around many temples. They are fed daily and treated as a part of the temple devotees. In and around Baisagi villages in Rajasthan, the herds of black buck, chingaram, nilgai and peacocks can be used, can be seen as an integral part of the community and nobody harms them. For us, the program has been formal existence since 1988 when the state of Odisha passed the first resolution for joint forest management. JFM depends on the formation of local village institutions that undertake protection activities mostly on degraded forest land management by the forest department. In return, the members of these communities are entitled to intermediary benefits like non-timber forest producers and share in the timber harvested by successful protection. The clear lesson from the dynamics of both environmental destruction and reconstruction in India that local communities everywhere have to be involved in some kind of natural resource management. But there is still a long way to go before local communities are at the center stage of decision making, except only those economic or developmental activities that are people-centric, environmental friendly and economically rewarding. The tree is a peculiar organism of unlimited kindness and benevolence and makes no demand for its substance and extends generously the product of its life activity. It affords protection to all beings, offering shade even to the ex man who destroyed Gautam Buddha 487 BC. So that's all about this chapter. If you are interested, please do like, share, and subscribe my channel. Okay, thank you.